I know you're well aware of the whole situation. Uh, in this case, as you know, you were wearing an Axon Flex body camera and you pretty much recorded the whole event. You've had an opportunity to read her complaint, yes, sir. to read your the officer winner's statement who was on the scene with you. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like you to do right now, Tim, is just start from the beginning, uh, where you were, what you were doing, and how the situation arose. Okay. I was on routine patrol, just patrolling around in my uh, police car up in Gemini North. Um, before we got to Green Park Drive, or before I got to Green Park Drive, I was heading towards corporate in Alfea. Um, I saw a vehicle that was uh, that Ms. King was operating change lanes uh, from the right lane to the left lane, and didn't use her, her turn signal. Um, Were you behind her at that time? I was. Okay. Um, if I wasn't behind her, I should say I was in the lane next to her that's behind her, though. Behind. Yeah. Uh, but when she changed lanes, not signaling, she actually was like cutting off the driver in front. Okay. So. And, and just so you'll know, I'm going to probably stop you at no certain problem. points, okay? Um, just so you can clarify things for me. Sure. Did she go past you? Like if you were driving on this, if you were driving, what direction were you driving? I was driving on Gemini North, getting ready to cross over Greek Park Drive, headed towards Alafaya Incorporated. Okay. And at this time, was she in front of you? Yeah, she was in front. I don't know if she was the vehicle directly in front of me, if I was in the lane off to the left, or if I was directly behind her, but she was ahead of me. Did you have an opportunity to see her operating that vehicle prior to that time? In other words, did she pass you, and did you have an opportunity to see inside that car? I didn't see who was operating the vehicle at all. Um, after we passed the, the uh, Greek Park Drive in Gemini, I also noticed when she was braking that she only had one working brake light. Um, so as we approached Alafaya and Gemini North, the intersection there, I got behind her and uh, decided to initiate a traffic stop. Um, she did a U-turn, once the light turned green, back onto campus and pulled off into that little offset that's in front of Sigma Chi. Um, I pulled behind her and uh, walked up, introduced myself, explained the reason why I stopped her. Um, she only had one working brake light. Uh, you know, she said that, it, I can't remember at what point she mentioned, but she said that her health was so bad or something like that. And, you know, we actually get that a lot when we're on traffic stops. You know, there's some medical something, or i got to go to the bathroom, or, you know, the, you know the, their women are on their period or something like that, or something's going on. So, but the way that she was saying it didn't seem like it was to raise alarm. Um, so I, you know, I figured that if it was to the point where it, she absolutely needed medical attention. It would she would have been responding a little bit differently. Um, I asked her for a license, registration, insurance. Uh, she handed me a driver's license and told me that she didn't have the the registration. She said it was her mom's car. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked her again. Well, you know, do you want to look for the registration? Not having it is is an additional fine. I asked her several times. I can't tell you exactly how many, but I tried trying to get her to to look for the registration. Uh, and she didn't really make any attempt to do so, which kind of raised a little bit of concern for me because I wasn't sure if she was concealing something in the glove box that she didn't want me to see. Um, you know, was there a contraband, weapon, anything of the sort? And she just didn't seem like she was too concerned with, you know, trying to produce that registration, even despite it being an additional uh, citable offense. Um, also, it, you know, as I'm up here talking to the vehicle, you know, I have my sunglasses on. So it does make things a little bit darker. It's a little bit harder to see through things too, um, the windows even. And you know, was, I wasn't really in a position where I could transition from this to a headband at you know at any time, tactically during the traffic stop. Um, after she refused to look for the registration, I went back to my vehicle um, and I decided to issue her a uniform traffic citation. I was actually not citing her for the registration. Even though I warned her for it, I was going to give her a fix-it ticket for the brake light being out for only having one working brake light. I do have a copy of the original uh, UTC that uh, you were going okay. to issue her, and um, uh, it's a three sixteen six one zero. Is that the that's fix -it? A fix it? Yes, sir. That's fix-it ticket. Yep. So that was uh, the fix-it ticket that I was going to issue. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I, when I, I look at traffic enforcement, that you're trying to correct the behavior, and she 
he didn't seem too concerned about looking for the registration, right. so I decided to, to go with the uniform traffic citation. Okay. Uh, but I did still cut another break, you know, right on the fix-it ticket mm -hmm. instead of the registration. Mm -hmm. After I completed the citation, I reapproached the vehicle. Ms. Um, King only had the window, I believe she had it up all the way at the time. I knocked on the window. Uh, she rolled it down a little bit, and I asked her if she could roll it all the way down. Uh, she started questioning why I needed it all the way down. And, you know, I'm paraphrasing. I don't know how many times you That's know right. I really asked. That's right. You know, um, so I asked her if she could roll it down. She asked why. I told her, you know, for my safety. She seemed very adversarial at that point. You know, I think it was because of the fact that she knew that she was going to be issued a citation. Um, I told her that I'd, I'd like her. You know, I wanted her to sign the citation. Um, and she was questioning why I need the window down, why I need the window down, and I expressed to her that it was for my safety. Um, at one point, she wound up rolling the window completely up. Uh, you know, I again told her roll down the window. When she wasn't working, you know, after she wasn't rolling down the window, I, I, I ordered her out of the vehicle at some point there. I wasn't sure if it was, you know, after she rolled the window up completely and was refusing to get out, or if it was before that. But at some point during that exchange, um, since she didn't want to roll down the window, I, I asked her if she could get, or I told her to get out of the vehicle. Uh, you know, it's just the, the whole, her whole demeanor during the whole thing was very, uh, you know, it, it, it just didn't add up to me. It was, you know, relatively minor infraction, and the refusal to look into the glove box really did raise concern that she might have something in the vehicle that she was trying to conceal. Um, and then when I reapproached the vehicle, she's adversarial during that, not wanting to roll down the window, whereas initially she did roll down the window, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, again, it started to raise a little bit of concern. Uh, Can you come up with any any theory as to why, at first, she was willing to roll her window down, but then after you approached the vehicle after writing the ticket, that she she wouldn't. Is there any the only thing that I, in your mind? The only thing that I can think of is I, I know that she was on the telephone at the time uh, when I walked up, so I wasn't sure if she made a phone call to someone and they were giving her advice over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, I also I mean it could also be that because she noticed that she was getting a ticket, she wasn't trying to be, she wasn't going to be as pleasant you know as she was initially. So you know, have you experienced that? I mean. You're an exper you're a relatively experienced officer. How many years on the job? Uh, well, between corrections here, it's be 12 years. Okay, but in, in specifically in traffic enforcement, yes, sir. Have, do you notice a change in people's demeanor uh, when you actually when you're talking to them as opposed to standing there with a citation in your hand? You do sometimes, you know, it's not an all the time thing. Um, you know, I've had people thank me at the end of a traffic stop. You know, it really, it's, it's hit or miss. Um, you know, some of the citations now are, are, you know, the civil penalties are pretty expensive. So, you know, and I understand that that civil penalty could add some sort of financial burden onto them. So I do try to use discretion when I'm, when I'm issuing citations. Sometimes if the offense is too egregious, I'll still elect to issue the citation. And, you know, I explain to them, and. Nine times out of ten, they understand, and we just part ways. You know, everything's cordial. You know, we don't we don't exchange or you know don't you know, we don't become adversarial at any time. You or me? I believe you, sir. Yes. Okay. So um, after I ordered the vehicle, she refused to. Uh, she rolled up the window. I, I called for. I walked back to my vehicle, put the uh, ticket book on the hood of my car, and called for uh, backup. Officer Winter was already. Uh, sitting by Sigma Chi mm -hmm. um, while I was on the traffic stop, just staying in the area while I was on the traffic stop. We do that normally. We back each other up, all of you know our squad. We don't necessarily pull behind and turn on the lights to have two cars with red and blue lights on, but we'll stay in the area in case you know that officer needs backup. Um, so I called for backup. She pulled across. Uh, I was still ordering Miss King, you know, roll down the window or get out of the vehicle. Uh, she wasn't complying with that. Uh, she rolled down the window at one point, and um, she said, you know, I, I can't remember what point, I believe she said sometime that uh, I'm not refusing to sign the citation or, or something at, during, during that point, because, um, you know, I, I understand she's not required to sign the citation, mm -hmm. but we never really got to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was kind of leading up to that point. Um, you know, and she wasn't refusing to sign the citation. She just wasn't getting out of the car or rolling down the window. <laughs> um, so at one point, Officer Winters up. We're both ordering her to roll down the window or get out of the vehicle. 
Um, I see Miss King look over towards Officer Winter at one point, and the window is cracked, and I saw opportunity where I thought that I could possibly open the door. Um, so I reached in to the to through the window and started to go down towards the uh, the unlock button. And at that point, she looked back over, and I I warned her. I said, if you you know roll up the window on my arm, and that's pretty much where I got to. Um, I started feeling the pressure on the window. Now my arm was like, it's, it's kind of hard to explain because I was like reached in like this, mm -hmm. sort of. So I know on the camera, you're actually seeing off to the left of the window when I'm, while right. I'm doing it. Right. Uh, so you don't really get a clear view of my right arm that's in there. Um, you know, and I realize that there is, you know, because of me reaching in, the, the sheer nature of how wide the window is open, there's mm -hmm. going to be some pressure already on my window. But the second she started pushing down on the button is when I, I broke the window. Uh, open the door, order out of the vehicle. Um, now, was it your intent to break the window, or what were you trying to do? I tried to get my arm out. Okay. <laughs> you know? Well, you, now, you had your and, right arm in the window, and you reached with your yeah. left arm. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Was it your intent to break the window? Well, at, at, at that point, um, you know, if, you know, I, I can't really tell you what my exact it's intention was with that. It was just one of those things, my arm was in there, um, you know, and it was just a split second decision where, you know, I was pulling my arm out and then also I believe I had my left hand on the window and that's how I, I actually pulled, yeah. you know, on there. Um, you know, I, it was clear to me that she wasn't being compliant. Mm -hmm. And at that point I already decided that I was going to place her under arrest, you know, before that. Uh, you know, she was resisting uh, arrest without violence. Um, so, you know, I... I Try to get her. In a perfect world, I probably would have preferred to break a rear window or something like that. You know, if we had to get into a vehicle to try to, you know, apprehend someone or arrest someone, not the not the front. But again, once I started reaching into the window, I was kind of committed to that action. Um, you know, I wasn't going to necessarily retreat from that. You know, I I, I made the decision that, and that's what I was going to stick with. Um, I broke the window, uh, unlocked the door, uh, got her out. Was ordering her to the ground. You know, she was rigid, tense. You know, fighting. I wouldn't say fighting. You know, like punching or anything like that. But she was resisting again. Still, she was a little, you know, tense while we were trying to get her to the ground. Was she her. pulling away from you or anything? Uh, she was. Away? She was tensing her, her, her. Maybe not like jerking her arms away, but she was, you know, trying to, you know, pull them away. Um, you know, it wasn't like, you know, she was. I would say actively resisting, yes, for sure, but it wasn't like she was forcefully, you know, like shrugging back and forth or anything like that. It was just more like, you know, trying to clam up or, or close her arms. Um, you know, we got her on the ground, handcuffed her, um, got her up. She was, you know, she did mention before that she was uh, going to the medical or going to the, the health center or for something. I asked her if she needed a, an ambulance if she was injured. I, I looked, you know, looked up and down to see if there was any visible injuries on her. I didn't see anything visible. I looked down and actually noticed that I actually had blood on me. And I wasn't sure if it was from me or if it was from her. Um, so, rescue arrived. You know, I believe she was alleging that uh, she was having a miscarriage um, or something like that. I believe it was a miscarriage that she said that she was having. Um, Fire department came out, assessed her. She declined to be transported to the hospital. Um, I, I think it came to find out that it wasn't a miscarriage; that it was, uh, you know, she was having irregular bleeding or something like that. I, I heard that somewhere from some on, on the scene. I couldn't tell you exactly who it was that theater or someone else. Um, well, you've probably reviewed the, the tape several times, haven't you? Well, I, I watched it, the tape several times. I haven't watched it. I can truthfully say since probably. Early November. So you were able to to use the tape to recollect the events. I'm, 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 I'm sure. So well, yeah. If I, if I were to watch the tape again, I, I would definitely would be able to tell you exactly, yeah. specifically what was occurring at that time. But you know, I you know this kind of reached uh, the media, and it became quite stressful for me and my family. So I haven't watched it since like November. Um, you know, it was just one of those things that I was trying to put behind me. You know. So that's pretty much where it was. You know, FD came out, assessed me. Um, I wound up arresting Miss King for resisting with violence, resisting without, and uh, battered on a law enforcement officer. Um, and so did you ever issue her with a ticket? Um, I believe I did. No, this one was voided. 
I believe I wrote another one. I believe I wrote another one for the fix it ticket. So um and he stole the same charge of fix it fix it ticket. Yeah, and and last I recall I checked on my orange clerk, she just paid the citation. Okay. So and that's pretty much All right. how I remember it, sir. Okay. Well as you know we have the event uh mm -hmm. video and, and uh you know uh, again it's it's very easy to line up you know, your, your events to to the video so but let's talk specifically about the charges okay, okay. Um, uh, she describes your actions as as violently and aggressively breaking the window how do you respond to that uh, I, I don't think I was violently or aggressively doing anything I think if anything her act was more violent or aggressive than my acts you know she was trying to roll the window up on my arm. So I, I definitely don't think that my actions were aggressive by any means. Um, of course, you are going to use some force to, to break a window, but it's not, it's not meant to intimidate or anything like that. It's meant to free my arm and you know, conduct business. Um, so I would, my argument to that, would, or my, my statement to that, would be that her acts were more aggressive than mine. Um, in her statement, she also states that she was trying to communicate with Officer Winter. Yes. Um, it does, uh, does it indicate whether or not the passenger side window was down. Did she, she, did she roll down the passenger side, do you recall? I don't recall. Um, you know, she might have cracked it. Okay. Uh, I really don't recall. Um, you know, I, I did try looking through the window several times, and I, I can't remember seeing if the passenger side window was down at all. I can tell you that it wasn't completely down because Officer Winter the entire time was ordering roll down the window or we're going to break the window. The same, you know, the same thing. So um, yeah. I, that's I couldn't tell you for sure though. Okay. Um, do you? She claims that you were you're, that you were using intimidation. Towards her, do you feel that there's any substance to that, that allegation? Absolutely not. Um, you know, I, I think at a certain point during the exchange, I wouldn't say intimidation, but you know, I, I do become a little uh, stern at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's initially it's ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I'm exchanging ma'am. I'm addressing her as ma'am. Can you please roll down the window? It's for my, you know, trying to explain the whole situation. And when, you know, she's being adversarial, you know, I'm not going to sit there and just ask her a million times to roll down the window. We're not getting anywhere. Uh, you know, the, the situation isn't developing. It's not, we're not progressing anywhere. So, you know, I will say that, you know, my voice, my tone of voice probably changed. Mm -hmm. It was not in a, in a means to intimidate, but it was a, a means to show that I mean business mm -hmm. right now. Um, and, you know, trying to get her to comply with my lawful order. All right, and obviously uh, you made a comment earlier that you you realized that she was not required by law to sign the citation. Yes, sir. And she actually made comments that you know, well, in her statement that the window was rolled down enough for you to pass the uh, citation through the window. Um, why did you decide not to uh, follow that course of action? Well, once once I walked up, you know, and I was asking her to roll down the window, and she wasn't complying with that, and became, you know, very adversarial at that point. You know, that just raises heightens my my awareness even more as to why she's not looking for her registration going in the glove box. Why is she being so argumentative and adversarial at this point? Uh, the situation didn't need to escalate. You know, it, it really. It needed to stay down here, and her actions by you know her being adversarial really escalated the situation. Um, you know, looking at it, you know, could you have passed the citation through there at some point? Sure, but then again, I'm also risking other things. You know, I, I don't know if she's concealing other things in the vehicle. I don't know if she, you know if she is going to drive off. We never really got to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, on, on traffic stops, I typically, when I issue a citation, I'll go up. You know, I say I'm issuing a uniform traffic citation. Um, you know, you have a couple options to take care of the citation. If you'd like me to explain them to you, I'd like you to sign right here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I haven't had really anyone tell me no. You know, um, and if they did, that's fine. You yeah. know. Um, you know, I, I also recognize that she doesn't have 
You know, she doesn't have to roll down her window all the way, you know, but for, from an officer safety standpoint, I couldn't necessarily see that what was in the car. I thought that my, my order was reasonable. Um, and, or, you know, my request was reasonable. Uh, and I also know that, you know, there is case law that states we can order people out of the vehicle at any time, and it just didn't feel right to me. So that's the reason why I issued, issued a, a sort of get out of the car. Um, as far as the signing of the citation, like I said, we never really got to that point. We were, we were getting to that point, we were approaching that point, and that's when things kind of just hit the fan. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. She further makes a statement uh, uh, that she felt she was being, wasn't being treated well because she was black and the officers were white. How do you respond to that statement? I, I think it's ludicrous to be honest. Um, you know, it was, and I, I think the, the accusations are are just heinous. Um, I had no idea what Miss Miss King's race was before conducting the traffic stop whatsoever. Um, and it doesn't matter what race you are, if you're white, black, Hispanic, whatever. I'm going to treat you the same. Mm -hmm. um, and you can pull up videos from traffic stops and see. You know, I, I, I treat everyone the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think those accusations are just ludicrous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Completely off the wall. All right. Well, then specifically to the charges uh, presented to you, all right, do you believe that you were rude in this case? No, I do not. Uh, impolite? Discourteous? No. I actually think I exercise uh, a lot of patience you know, initially, uh, you know, multiple times for the registration and also when she wasn't rolling down the window, I still addressed her as ma'am. I was respectful trying to get her to roll down the window. And then we reached the point where I became stern, but I still don't think it was unprofessional or anything at all. I think it was well within my, my means or my authority. Um, did you, in fact, ever gain access to her glove box? You did. Find anything in there? Found the registration. So it wasn't registration? Yes, sir. No insurance card? Um, I couldn't tell you if the registration or the insurance card was in there. I believe it was Officer Elliott that did the inventory search. Okay. But I do know that the registration was in the vehicle. Okay. No weapons? No, nothing. No, no, no contraband, no, nothing out of the no, ordinary. You know, that's why if she would have just opened the glove box and looked for it, she probably could have got the registration. Yeah. So. Did she, was it locked? And that's why? she Because I, in the video, she reaches over. But then stops and says, "I can't get in there," or something to that effect. Was it locked? I I don't remember. Okay, I don't remember. Right. Uh, major point. All right, uh, Tim. Well, you pretty much addressed all the uh, concerns that she had, and I guess the final stage will be at this point. Is there anything you would like to add to? Uh, to, my, to assist in my investigation in regards to this matter? That's nothing that I can really think of. I, you know, I'm not sure if you were aware that she, Ms. King, already had a student conduct hearing and I have a deposition coming up for the criminal case for that, but I don't know anything else from an administrative standpoint, sir. Okay. Alrighty. Well, it is 1049 and this concludes the interview. Okay.